welcome to Liturgical Shenanigans, a Wayfolk Arts podcast with your hosts, Hannah, Phil, Jackson, and Maddie. Friends, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Liturgical Shenanigans. This week, we're bringing to you a liturgy of the month. And before we dive in together, I find it appropriate to give you some trigger warnings. If you didn't know, April involves Infertility Awareness Week. And so, as the name of the week suggests, during our time together, we will be talking about infertility because that is what the liturgy is in relation to. There is also mention of pregnancy loss and some mature language. Um, So if those topics are hard for you to listen to right now or engage in, I invite you to choose to not listen this week, and that is okay. If there are things that you need to engage in community or with a therapist or maybe with your partner, I would love for you to do that. Because there is mature language, if you are not comfortable with mature language, Um, Or if you have little ones that you're not comfortable with listening to mature language, I invite you to maybe listen to it ahead of time and decide after you've listened um, and then invite them in at a later time. We really value you taking care of yourselves. So please do that however you need to um, this week. Thanks for being here. Yes, friends. Hey, there we go. Welcome back, everybody. Here we are. We're back again. Another week, two weeks, another liturgical shenanigans. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Feels like only yesterday. Ah. <laughs> yeah. It's been too long. Um, happy still April. Happy still April. Hope mm-hmm. you all had good Easter tides. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> And this, so so we did. If it, Easter Tide is connecting back to the last episode, fun episode, definitely check it out. Um, uh, it was a little unhinged. Little unhinged, um, but a lot of delightful conversation uh, came out of that. So definitely check that one out. Uh, this one though, we're returning to one of the kind of regular rhythms of the podcast, which is a liturgy of the month. Yeah, um, and it's me, Maddie, who gets to bring you the liturgy of the month. Uh, April is is a special month, not only because it's Easter, but if you didn't know, the last week in April is Infertility Awareness Week. Mm -hmm. So this year that falls on April 23rd through 29. It usually happens around the time, so it hits right before Mother's Day. Mm. Yeah. Yep. I was curious, like, uh, that seems significant. Uh, How is that? Is that... Is that intentional to like give some of that awareness beforehand? Is it oh, aware because it's hard? Like, yeah. So I I think it's it's to give permission for people who are grieving the fact that they are not mothers or parents to to grieve it well uh, and actually to be allowed to talk about it publicly before we're all kind of. Uh, overloaded by the social media posts, by the church service, by the um, family gatherings around Mother Day, Mother Day, yeah. Mother's yeah. Day. Mother's Day. Yeah. I will say, and this is this is slowly changing, but it, you know, infertility in general is something that is kind of taboo to talk about. People get really uncomfortable. So the fact that a week exists at all is great. Mm-hmm. Male infertility is definitely still not talked about enough, yeah. and the fact that it it happens before Mother's Day and not Father's Day is mm-hmm. probably a discussion that could be had. Um, however, Mother's Day comes first. So I like to think it's it's a way to give people yeah. who, who are not able to become parents for the first time, for the second time, for the third time, because secondary and, and third, for, I don't know what, third day? Ter- tertiary? Ter- tertiary. tertiary yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Infertility are things. Um, to, to sit in that space to talk about it um, before the Mother's Day, Father's Day seasons begin. Yeah. 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 
So if you don't know this about me, the reason that that week is meaningful to me in particular is because though I have a child now, she's wonderful. My spouse and I went through three years of infertility uh, in order to get to her. And it, I always think it's kind of funny to say we went through three years of infertility. We went through three years of knowing that I had multiple infertility diagnoses hmm. my whole life. I like leading up to that had all the same chronic health conditions that, that I now know I have. Mm -hmm. um, but three years of knowing yeah. and waiting and hoping and wanting. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so perhaps uh, when this, when this airs, you'll have seen women talking about um, or men talking about infertility awareness week. Um, it's, I feel like it's becoming more of a known thing, but maybe that's just because I started following a lot of infertile accounts mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, in order to find community. And on maybe what you might be more familiar with is in October, it's infant and pregnancy loss awareness yeah. uh, month. And there's a specific day in October and I never remember the exact day that, that you light a candle mm. for, um, for your loss. So I think that one is more, more well-known, but both exist, both are recognized and both are worth acknowledging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your liturgy, uh, yes. this month could have opened with that. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> yes. My liturgy of the month is specifically a liturgy for infertility. So, uh, also probably should have said this at the beginning, maybe we'll insert something but um <laughs> we'll say it again trigger warnings abound uh talking about infertility can be can be hard hearing about infertility can be hard it can also be really great and you can find resonance with it um i i, I will say when i was in the height of my journey hearing someone who had a baby talk about infertility was harder for me mm -hmm. than hearing someone who was still in the midst of it talk sure. about it so I, i'll also name yeah i, I have i'm in a a different privilege space now than I was doesn't change what happened. doesn't change that I'm still going to continue to go through the same things that I went through. Mm -hmm. Um, is he's probably our only kiddo, but all, all the grace to do what you need to be present to this conversation and this liturgy. Yeah. Anything else you'd like us to know before we engage your liturgy? Um, even if you, even if you are not someone who has experienced infertility and you're like, okay, this liturgy has nothing to do with me, hmm. know that they just changed the statistic. It used to be one in eight. One in six hmm. people are diagnosed with infertility and one in four have experienced some sort of pregnancy loss. So hmm. even if you are not experiencing it, you probably know someone who is. Yeah. So it may seem like this might not be relevant to you, but but I, I promise it, it is in some capacity. So I guess just know that. Makes yeah. me think that a lot of times when I think something isn't relevant to me, that means that I've got more work to do, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm, if I'm like, oh, this isn't about me, then like, yeah, yeah, that means that it probably really is about me and I need to pay attention. And the Bible is full of yeah, Stars I'm going to say infertile myrtles, but that I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> 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 Yeah. And you'll hear some of that in this liturgy. Yeah. So yeah. with that, we usually invite you to to do what you need to do in order to ga engage a liturgy well. So if this is triggering for you, maybe that means turning this off and, and not engaging it. Maybe it means engaging it with a partner or a friends or a therapist. If you're driving, it might mean waiting until you uh, can pull off and park or you're done driving to listen. Um, whatever works for you in the space you currently are. And I'd also invite you to just take a deep breath and settle yourself in a posture to receive these words. So this is a liturgy for infertility. Lord of Sarai, of Hannah, of Elizabeth, Lord of women who laugh at the face of hope, who bargain and plead, who were shown favor. When will it be my turn? I have laughed, 
I have bargained and pled. Where is my favor? Is this a failure on my part or on yours? Do you sit with me and wait? Do you see me? Do you already know the end of this road? Perhaps this is an invitation to redefine what it means to be a mother. For mothers are more than childbearing women. Mothers are warriors. Mothers are caretakers. Mothers are advocates. I am already all those things. Help me to see my worth already there. Lord of women, who sit in tension, who bask in joy, who are afraid, who wait. Be with me in these spaces. Validate my pain and my joy even when the world won't. And make me the one who laughs, who bargains and pleads, and who has received your favor anyways, one day soon. Thank you for sharing that. You're yeah, welcome. You. So maybe a good jump off point is the the kind of somewhat typical <laughs> first question is what was it like to kind of write this liturgy at the time that you were writing this liturgy? Mm -hmm. um, what was it like to kind of deal with the subject matter within the context of a liturgy? Yeah. <clears throat> so I wrote this during a semester in seminary where I was taking a class on the prophetic narratives and something that I noticed and maybe just because this, you know, we, we kind of project our life experience into the text was how much of the prophetic narr narratives included tales of infertility. And I was so angry reading those stories that I wanted to have um, space to sit in that anger. And I also wanted to have words that that matched what I wanted God to hear me say um, in, in a liturgy context. And the, I just didn't feel like the words existed. I couldn't find mm. ones that I liked. Um, mm. It doesn't mean that the ones that exist are bad. They just didn't feel like ones that that were helpful for me. A lot of them were really, really, really hopeful. <laughs> mm. Mm. And, and not that this one is absent of hope in any way, but they didn't have the where you at, God, this isn't fair, what am I to learn in this? It was very, um, I don't know, it, it just it just felt too happy, <laughs> some mm, of the mm -hmm. prayers. And, and infertility, uh, for me at least, was probably one of the darkest things I've gone through. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted it to be lamentful and also petition um, and also speak on some of those stories that I was wrestling with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was painful and good and I've used it. I've read it on other podcasts that I've been invited to share my infertility story on. So it's been also kind of cool to see the ways that it's met other couples where they're at and given words that perhaps they didn't have in this kind of context before. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the s a striking thing about it is, uh, along the lines of what you said, and something I appreciate in it, is how you claim space mm -hmm. in this in this liturgy. You kind of uh, make space both both in a in a uh, pers like the person who is making the space, but also plead for the space to be made as well. That that last stanza of the "Be with me in these spaces, validate my pain and my joy, even when the world won't." Um, is is so tied in with 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 um the the earlier stanzas like um oh the the heartbreaking is this a failure on my part or on yours do you sit with me and wait do you see me do you already know the end of this road be with me in these spaces is just such a yeah a, a space making and also a space requesting mm -hmm. statement well and it it can be a really lonely experience, particularly if you don't know others who have gone through this. Or again, you probably do know others who have gone through this, but they, they haven't felt they're allowed to share or, or they're not yet ready to share. Uh, again, the topic just kind of tends to be a bit taboo. And I, I don't know if that's just because we're uncomfortable with, with the reality that not everyone can have this thing that the world believes all people should have and want. Mm -hmm. Um, or 
if it's because we don't have language to talk about it or if it's because like we're talking about sex (laughs) and and, and body parts and what your body can or cannot do. Um, And so then if we do talk about it, it has to be very medical. (laughs) Right. Yeah, yeah. Which then kind of like distances you emotionally from the thing that you're talking about. Um, Well, for some, it's an admission of failure. Yeah. Like if I decided we're going to have our baby now. And then you don't. Um, I have very close people to me that when they have been trying, absolutely no one can know because we're not going to talk about it until it happens. And then we'll say, yeah, we just decided to. And then it feels even more isolating yeah. uh, when it doesn't go the way you think it went for everybody else. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Yeah. It, well, it, you were talking about sharing this with other people and this sort of opens up this space for solidarity. It strikes me as um, there's this potential for this liturgy or this prayer to be really meaningful if it were read in church spaces like a week or two before Mm -hmm. Mother's Day to kind of pair with this infertility awareness week slash month that you talked about at the beginning of the episode um, to like, both create space to mourn that loss alongside all of the people we know who are experiencing fertility in the church um, without necessarily needing to like if people didn't want that part of their story to be known like if that's too vulnerable of a space for them having something like this in a service would might create space Mm. um while not forcing everyone to be like, oh, yes, uh, pray for me because I'm right. experiencing infertility. Well, and I think it actually gives more permission for context to celebrate things like Mother's Day and Father's yeah. Day. Yep. Because a lot of the, the reasons why we're hesitant to do those things, or at least when I've served in, in churches, we've been hesitant to do those things, is because it's painful for people who aren't parents, who have lost parents who have strained relationship with like the more we make space for the hard reasons why we want to avoid celebrating the thing, Mm -hmm. the more we can also celebrate the thing. It's not taking away from people who are mothers or people who are fathers. It's, it's allowing people who have different experiences to also get to have those experiences Mm -hmm. in a worshiping space Mm -hmm. um, and giving permission for all the stories. Yeah. For everyone to be seen and known. Yeah. In that space. Yeah. And to see, right? Like, cause mm-hmm. I'm curious if this is something that we can open the door to. It's probably a contenty thing, but like, I wonder if you're open to talking at all about like sort of shaming or, uh, the way that someone might say like, why are you being so selfish? You know, like, obviously this isn't happening. You could adopt, you could, Oh, you know yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And so like when, when I haven't seen these people and I, and I don't understand that pain and it just strikes me as like, a I don't know why. I don't know why these people are being so selfish and wasting all this money and time doing this when there's plenty of babies that need. Which is always like, how many have you adopted? <laughs> <laughs> well, and even if they have, right? Like, I, I hear you. Usually, they haven't. <laughs> but even if they have, it doesn't. Ch- yeah. Anyway, I wondered if you talk about I that. Need to do that. Right. I wondered if you want if, if you have anything to share on. Well, I think people are just really quick to want to fix it, right? It's mm-hmm. and 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 yes, it's it's a they think you're selfish. Um, you're spending all this money on treatments. You could be which, to be clear, having spent the money on the treatments, I did not spend as much as I would spend adopting a child. Mm-hmm. Um, it it's it's wild to me because it's so invalidating. And you're and you're saying, um, one. Stop being sad. There's a real solution, a better solution for you. Two, it's your responsibility to fix the problems of all these kids that need homes. Also, those children that you're adopting can be your replacement dream, which feels really irresponsible. Uh, adoption to me, and I have, you know, have I have siblings who are adopted. Um, that feels like a really separate calling yeah. or, or a particular calling and something to feel moved to do and a really a decision not to take lightly. It's not I don't I personally don't feel that it should be a decision you make to to to, to feel better. Um, like sometimes you, people get pets to, to feel better about their current situation. Beautiful. A child. <laughs> um, that is a really 
that is so much pressure to put on this this kid who is already going to have adoption trauma. Mm -hmm. And then what happens if one day you become pregnant? Yeah. Uh, what, what, how does that kiddo feel knowing that you adopted them because you couldn't have this other thing and now you can, I don't know. That's just, that's a lot. Yeah. Um, and I know lots of people in the infertility community who chose adoption and are joyfully doing that. Again, they're joyfully doing it because they decided for themselves instead mm -hmm. of you're going to put that on me right. to do. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Wild. Yeah, to me it just strikes as like it's dehumanizing the person and seeing a problem solved, right? As opposed to let me listen to you, let me see you, let me sit with you in it. And and something like this forces <laughs> ev well, forces, right? But forces everyone in the room to be present in this longing, in this pain to to hopefully experience a little bit of empathy and being present with someone else's experience and pain. Along those lines, too, a, a, a hope I, I had. Um, so if you go back, so the three stories that I chose to include in this are Hannah's story, Elizabeth's story, and Sarai's story, uh, all, all popularly quoted stories in the midst of infertility journeys. They're often used also to invalidate pain, right? Mm -hmm. um, look what God did for these women. God can do this for you too. Mm -hmm. If you go back and read those stories, they suck. Mm -hmm. Hannah has to give up her baby after the baby is weaned. That is probably quite quick. Um, and, and then that baby becomes like an amazing prophet and that's great. Hannah doesn't get to raise this baby anymore. The baby is given over to... Uh, Oh my gosh, I'm blanking. Um, Samuel. Samuel. Thank you. Um, no, Samuel no, is the baby. Samuel's the baby. Samuel's the baby. Give, <laughs> give it to Eli, Eli, Eli. Yeah. to Thank be you. to be trained. Um, and then, uh, s s spoiler alert. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Sarah has her baby. First of all, at ninety something years old, which would just be so incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah. I uh, got pregnant at twenty seven. Horrible. Ex I wanted this baby. Horrible experience. My poor, poor body will never be the same. I can imagine being in my 90s and, and being pregnant and giving birth. And also God is like, yo, Abe, sacrifice the babes. Um, and although that story ends differently, that relationship is probably so strained for the rest of that father-son's relationship life. Sarai, I think, absolutely knew what was about to go down on that mountain. That is so much more trauma for God to inflict upon this couple. Um, Elizabeth eventually loses her kiddo. He dies gruesomely. I mean, it, it just... They blow. They're not like happy, <laughs> joyful yeah. things. It's it's a similar to if you go back and listen to my in my um, liturgy for women who were abused by clergy, where I talked about like God hearing um, Hagar and then going, I reread that story. Did God hear Hagar? God didn't really hear Hagar. Similar to this, like the way that God shows up is uncomfortable. Um, just like infertility is uncomfortable. It it just blows. Like there's no. There's not a ton of joy. <laughs> so stop trying to silver line it. Yeah. It's very Job-like. Yeah. Mm. It feels really remarkable to me then that you, you name joy as a thing. Um, you, the, those last lines are, be with me in these spaces, validate my pain and my joy, even when the world won't. Mm -hmm. I'm just really curious, like, in, in that really painful um, journey of infertility where we're like our, the longing we're naming as leaders in the church and artists in the churches to make space for those stories. Um, where does joy fit into that without erasing mm. um, the pain that's going on? Yeah. There's a lot of wins sometimes in infertility, but it becomes different than the win you think it's going to be. Mm. Like sometimes in our journey, I forgot, I would forget that the, the goal was a baby. So like a win of the month would be um, I had X amount of follicles <laughs> and I would get yes. really, really excited and then go, oh, wait, there's like more <laughs> that mm, needs yeah. to happen. Yeah. Um, and I would feel weird sitting in the space of like, I'm so excited and also I'm miserable. Yeah. Uh, and when I finally got pregnant, I was so happy and also so 
so traumatized still because mm-hmm. it's like that post traumatic experience after you get out of the infertility all of the effects of the years kind of crashed in on me um I was scared the whole time I was pregnant yeah. I that pregnancy started as a triplet pregnancy so there was immediate loss at the beginning of it um <sighs> Yeah. So it's not that joy doesn't exist. It's just different. It's yeah. not yeah. the like overwhelming joy of what I imagine a couple who has like a normal, ex- a normal. Mm. Who yes. want a child and get a child. Yeah. And it's easy. What everybody talks about yeah. <laughs> or what everybody warns you is going to happen if you have unprotected mm-hmm. <laughs> sex. Like I wanted it. I did what I was supposed to do and it happened. Yay. Um, I'll never know what yeah. that's like. So yeah, just making space for, for both and, and not, not allowing the joy to erase that there's still pain. I, you know, when I got pregnant um, and I still chose to continue talking about how hard infertility was and still have pain about it, mm-hmm. there were people in my life who were very like, you're fine now. Stop complaining. Mm-hmm. Um, you're getting people riled up for you and sad for you when they don't need to be sad for you. This is like when I wasn't even sharing that I was pregnant yet. Um, that's all over. Yeah, you don't deserve attention anymore. Right. You don't deserve uh, sympathy to be seen, to be, yeah. Yeah, and even now, like... As if it's a finite thing. Like, right. I only have so much empathy to give people, and you no longer deserve it. Mm. So There's room um, for both. And, and that's true of any, like, parents. Parenthood is joyful and dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Say more. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I didn't want to talk about the joyful and dark, and so I was going to throw you under a oh. bus. Yeah. You don't need to say more. Well, no. It's just I, I wanted my kiddo so bad. I love her. She brings me such joy. Also, if I could sleep, that'd be great. <laughs> um, I got postpartum depression pretty bad. Uh, I'm tired. Sometimes I still long for for life before my kiddo and that that's totally normal by the way yeah um there is room for both feelings yeah yeah making space for complexity we like that here we do like that here the bible likes that yeah yeah (laughs) i mean yes yeah for sure as we near the end of uh, the time we have on this podcast episode to talk about is there anything left unsaid any kind of Last thoughts as we kind of reflect back on our conversation on this liturgy. We'll read it one more time, of course, but is there any any one last sort of things that you want to be sure is said? Yeah. If you if you hear this liturgy and it, it strikes a chord with you because you're going through this, have gone through this, um, are worried you might go through this, just know you, it, it feels really lonely and you're not alone. Um, it feels like you've done something wrong and you've not done something wrong. I, I remember my huge thing in my brain was that I felt like God was somehow punishing me or, or I wasn't meant to be a mother. Um, that's all bullshit. And it's valid that you feel that way. Um, and there are, there's a community of, of us who are with you, even if we don't know you yet. Um, and even if spaces are trying to invalidate your experience, it's not invalidated and it matters. Yeah. You know, it makes me want to put a lament channel on our Discord. Like, wouldn't that be... Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds like a, hey, let's go have fun lamenting, but actually a space that's designated for being seen. Yeah. Whether it's infertility, which I bet there's folks listening where that is their story, mm-hmm. or something else, trauma of some other kind, or just longing or sadness or mourning or grief, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe we'll do that. Yeah. So check check down below for the link to the Discord if you'd like to come uh, share some thoughts and be seen and see others. Um, enjoy. Yeah. And in mm-hmm. pain. Yeah, and follow follow on social media hashtag Infertility Awareness Week if you want to hear people's stories. People will be sharing. Um, I I bet there will be people in your life that share that maybe you just haven't noticed before. Um, and, and if you feel so inclined to share your own story, this is the week. I mean, share it any time. But, but if you want to be part of a community that's all sharing together, there's like solidarity in that. And I'd also love to hear your story. Yeah, we would too. Would you read it for us one more time, Maddie? 
Absolutely. A liturgy for infertility. Lord of Sarai, of Hannah, of Elizabeth, Lord of women who laugh at the face of hope, who bargain and plead, who were shown favor. When will it be my turn? I have laughed, I have bargained and pled. Where is my favor? Is this a failure on my part or on yours? Do you sit with me and wait? Do you see me? Do you already know the end of this road? Perhaps this is an invitation to redefine what it means to be a mother. For mothers are more than childbearing women. Mothers are warriors. Mothers are caretakers. Mothers are advocates. I am already all those things. Help me to see my worth already there. Lord of women, who sit in tension, who bask in joy, who are afraid, who wait, be with me in these spaces. Validate my pain and my joy even when the world won't. And make me the one who laughs, who bargains and pleads, and who has received your favor anyways, one day soon. Thank you for tuning in to this conversation on liturgical shenanigans. If you enjoyed this conversation, please share it around to other people who you think might enjoy it as well. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the places. You can find us at the username Wayfolk Arts. And if you're looking for a way to get involved with the show a little bit more, head on over to patreon.com slash Wayfolk Arts, where you get to hear more of the show and get access to a bunch of other patron-only posts and things like that. Thank you all for tuning in. It was a delight to spend some time with you. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you.